Welcome to a special edition of the Coach's Roundtable and an inside look at the Pittsburgh Penguins. So far, 5-5-4 five, five, and four on the season. And no one better to take that look for us than former Penn star and now color analyst, the best in the business, Jay Caulfield. Jay, I I'm not sure where, where to start here. Uh, just look at the start of the season. The Pens seem to be on a scoring spree. But, wow, things have suddenly changed. They're in a prolonged slump. They're 5-5-4. Five, five, and four. Just looking at the games over over the weekend with Ottawa and then the Caps, the Pens out scored six to three, six to one. And and Jay, is it just me? But especially against the Caps, the Pens look really slow against the Caps. Yeah, it did. It did have that. Uh, first of all, Ed, good to be with you. Um, as you go on with the games, I, I I agree. It had that. It just didn't have. Look, I'm going to first go off with the guys that come back from COVID. I don't know what they go through. It's a very tough, tough situation just in general. Uh, as hockey players, when you're off the ice, even for two days, you don't feel right. So for 10 days off, and I know they get on and by themselves, whatever, but not the same. So for them to come back and battle, uh, the guys that did that last night, that's, uh, that's, that's as good as you can do. But the rest of it. Uh, Ed, to your point, it did. They did look slow. You would have thought the Capitals were the aging. You know, they're both kind of aging out in a sense, right? I mean, just the way it goes. I mean, the superstars have been in the, the, the league 15 years, but the Capitals were faster. They were the better team last night. First 20 minutes was even back and forth, but then you get uh, the goals that go against you, and uh, you know it's the way it is. But I, I think the Ottawa thing is disturbing. They had seven guys out of the lineup. Uh, and they get the win. They were the hungrier team. Then last night, I, I agree, Ed, the Penguins didn't look as quick, and they're supposed to be built that way, but they didn't look at last night. Jay, what was puzzling? You come out for the third period. The Pens are down 4-1. to one. You think, well, get a goal here. But the right. Caps come out like they were down 4-1. to one. They were on the attack, very aggressive, and scored their 15-minute, uh, yeah. 17-second uh, mark of the – uh, third uh, period there and I just said wow they they're hungry and they come out on the attack yeah I would have thought I, I thought the same thing I thought hey you might catch a Caps team that they they're up 4-1 they could tell it was kind of a comfortable lead that they might be the flatter team in the third period or just be a little passive and it was the opposite it was just how you talked about it is they came out they were the aggressor uh, they produced and, and got on the board a couple more times uh, but that's that's a that's a sign that you don't like, you don't want to see it. And especially, a, especially a Caps game, you can have, there's going to be games that don't go your way or, you know, every player's not on the same page and you got some on, on the bus and some really aren't there. And it's going to happen in 82 games, but to have it back to back when you got beat in Ottawa, then you come in against a team that usually brings out the best as, uh, in the Penguins and the energy that goes with it. That wasn't there last night for me when I watched it. So they didn't have it. They got beat, and they're going to have to regroup before they play Buffalo uh, tomorrow night. Uh, com coming into the – before these two games on the weekend, I was just looking uh, about the goaltending, and there's Jari, uh, goals against 2.23. Uh, I think the leader in, in the league is um, – I think it's Anderson, 1.77. Jari's number 10. Jari's number 9 in save percentage. Only with uh, Reimer's first uh, – Nine four zero Jari nine two nine. So is is that a huge difference or is is it very minuscule? Uh, it's a big. Well, the one seven is a big difference. Yep, that's a big number. Your save percentage, all those things come into play. You know, back uh, back in the day, if you're around 900, 905, that was a great number. Now, now when you're nine thirty and above, I mean, it's amazing how it's changed as far as goaltending is concerned, Ed. But it's the timing of those goals and what you know how they take place and. And uh, you, you can't be around 900. So Jari's been very good through the, you know, opening part of this season. And it's kind of flipped. The roles have flipped, right? Ed? Jari uh, dismissed having a tough start right now. Uh, he also got the short end of the stick. If you look at the draws of the games that he had to play, they were tough. He had Tampa in Tampa. Then he gets, or rather, Florida in Florida. Then he got the Calgary Flames when he came back. I think the concern is now you're going to look at it Another night of giving up to your backup goaltender, probably pushing, I think his number's close to five goals against. That's going to – you You watch. He's got to have – his next start has to be a good one for himself. Or it's uh, – you got to lean on your backup goaltender to be solid. And uh, he, he's having 40 minutes of good then, then, and then getting beaten. Some not are all his fault, Ed. But the bottom line, when your numbers are what they are, 
uh, this is going to be a topic of discussion, uh, like starting now. I believe the talk shows and all that will start having all this conversation about the goaltending again. And it's not, uh, uh, the Smith just has, hasn't had the start he wanted and Jari's been very good. And last night, there's some you can't do much about. So the Penguins, when they have breakdowns, they're in the back of the net. So, but again, I still believe that the goaltending part, Ed, is going to be a topic as we move forward. Well, one play that stands out to me, uh, Jay, but when uh, I think it was Ovechkin was coming down on the right side, and I forget yeah. who's on the left for the Caps, and there was no one else there. And, and it's those two against Jari. I don't know if any goalie defend against that. He was looking for Ovechkin to make a shot. Ovechkin made yeah. a neat pass, and boom, there was a goal. But what – what was he to do about that? Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't believe all the – I mean, if you break down every goal, and they go through everything when they watch – when they go through video and and tape. And and when you look at that, there isn't anything. He's setting up. He locked in on – Ovechkin did a great job because he wound up at a little shot fake and, and Jari locked in on him. And once that happened, then he was kind of committed. And he still almost got across and he got through the – I believe it was Marino and Pedersen coming back. Uh, they just couldn't get it. It, got, it gets through, and I believe that was the Hathaway goal, right? Ed? So, uh, to me, there's not much. And there are a number of goals that are like that. I mean, truthfully, there's not much uh, a bing-bing play or a bounce here that you're setting up and the bounce goes the other way. That happened to DeSmith the other night, Ed. So, um, some of the, you, you, can't, you can't fault him or the goaltending in, in some situations. But the bottom line is it's still, even all that being said, you're going to start looking at numbers and people are going to get a little leery about, you know, what do you have? What, do, what is, what is your plan as far as goaltending? And uh, again, if they can, they need to turn around the next, the next start for DeSmith is big. And when he gets it, I don't know, but if there's a back to back probably coming up, but it's going to be a big start for him because if, if it doesn't go well, uh, it, it, you watch it, the conversation will turn to that immediately. So hopefully for him, he has a good start. Cause I do think he got the short end of the stick with the draws that he had and uh, the team wasn't as good in front of him. And again, some of those things that there's not much you can do. But Jay, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the, the Caps goalie, he had a nice night because the Caps seemed like they were always down in front of the pens that attack, attack, attack. Seemed yeah. to be a great relief for your defense and your goalie. Yeah, I think I, that's a good point. I don't think he had to, uh, I mean, he was tested. He was on top of his game. He, he played a good game he did last night. But it wasn't it wasn't probably his toughest outing that he had to face, and uh, and the Penguins just uh, it just wasn't the normal game. They're in a little lull right now, and when you're in a lull like that, uh, the turnovers everything goes the other way. And I, and I believe a transition game turnovers feeding a transition game at are big because it's momentum shift every time. You're going down, you don't get it deep, it's going back the other way. That was happening at times last night. So Vanacek he had a, he had a good night for himself. But uh, the Caps made it easy for them, and they dominate. They took play. They controlled play most of the night. Well, Jay, we knew the scoring was going to be tough with both Crosby and Malkin out. Malkin's not due back until, I don't believe, January. I yeah. think Penn's only averaging three goals, a little bit more than that uh, per game, and giving up three goals. So there's not much room there for error. Uh, you, you make one mistake by your goalie, yes, be nearly – uh, perfect with that kind of average on both sides. Yeah, and that's but and this will all start to change a little bit. You know, Crosby, it's it's a shame he gets back from his in, from his surgery or the off season has one game as we know the history. Then he goes into COVID, comes back and gets another game last night. This will all start to pick up, Ed. I believe just with him back in the fold and the way the lineup has to fall out. I think the key is going to be to help that go keep going. You need those. You need those players that we probably talked about. And you thought probably before the season started how to pick it up with the main guys out, and that's Kapanen, that's Zucker, that is uh, you know your Jeff Carter's been doing his thing. But you're looking at those type of players, Rust and Gensel, Kapanen and Zucker have to be the ones that pick it up. And across the the numbers, I mean, Kapanen had a hat trick in one game, but outside of that, in 14 games, he's got four goals, and three of them were in one game. That's that's why it's been so big with the other additions that have, have brought to the table this year in Rodriguez, McGinn, Heinen, uh, O'Connor, when he's in the lineup, they had to produce. And when they did, that gave the Penguins a nice start. Now you're going to lean. You need to lean on your superstars. And and uh, I believe I believe when they all get in sync and start to play, you know, work and practice together again, they'll find that chemistry yet and get back into the normal flow that we we always expect to see. 
Yeah, unusual that Rodriguez is the leading uh, uh, points guy for, for the Pens. He has like 11. He's somewhere around in that 50 to 60 uh, ranking of yeah. scoring for National Hockey League players. We're, we're quite unaccustomed to seeing uh, no one at near the top for the Pens. Yeah, it really is wild. I mean, look, we've uh, in the city of Pittsburgh, right, Ed, we've been blessed. You go back from – go back to Pierre LaRouche days and the superstars that came through, but really with Mario. You go from Mario – you got Yager, all the great, great players. Then you get Crosby and Malkin. So every night since the 80s, you've had superstars basically playing the game, right? There's a little lull gap in early 2000, but you still had these players that uh, would dominate and be on the, on the score sheet. So uh, again, you're hoping this is what, this is a very delicate time because, you know, this is, uh, you're looking at what the future in a sense when the superstars kind of age out and they move on and uh, like in every sport uh, you got to, you got to piece together a team. And I think Ron Hexel is going to be the great guy for it because he's got, he's, he's a patient GM. Uh, and I think he's going to, he's overriding and seeing what's going on and he'll start making changes. So you're not having this lull. I mean, but to have the generational talent for so many years at uh, it's a blessing for the fans that have been here and the organization that's been able to put a, a great team on the ice because they've had those, players and they build around it uh when you get this gap and, then, and again 81 game 82 games there's going to be lulls you just couldn't have it start too quick with the rest of your division being very very solid and uh points you give away i think the ottawa game is going to be one you look at and go well there's two points we gave away and it's not that ottawa doesn't work hard but they they had seven guys out that's the kind of game that you look back and go well you hope that doesn't burn you or whatever it is but it is something that happens in november can beat you you can't win it all, but you certainly can start to give stuff away. And it's a tough division right now, obviously, Ed. But uh, the Penguins' goal scoring has got to come from within. It's going to be creative what they do. There's a lot of players that could be in this lineup. And I think as you move forward and when you have games like you did over the weekend, it's, there's adjustment involved. I think that young O'Connor is a, a player that deserves to be in the lineup. Uh, you don't want to stun a growth of a player like that. But they, they sent him down. We'll see what happens uh, as you move forward here. You, you mentioned GM uh, Hextall, and this has been a, a question that's lingered in my mind since the end of last season. When we know Sullivan likes speed and quickness, and yeah. Hextall mentioned he wanted the Pens to get bigger and more physical, but I'm not sure I'm seeing bigger and more physical on a part of the Pens. Yeah, I don't see that. I, I don't see that either. I mean, it's uh, the physical players have to be like Zach Aston Reese, a player that's you know, he's on the third or fourth line. He's got to be physical. He's got to be physical out there. McGinn's going to be a guy that always finishes his checks. Hein is just a good – he's he's a really smart hockey player and, and a, a great addition. But I don't see the – I don't see the bigger physical – that's not a bit bigger physical team that's out on the ice there right now. It's just not. And then, then the game last night is proof of it. They're, they're, it's a passive lineup. And, and it doesn't – that's not meaning that um, – Look, that's how they play the game. They're, this is how they're built right now. And it's uh, – but you can't have, in my opinion, you can't have Sidney Crosby. He's the only one that showed, like – he's one of the few that showed a lot of fire, at least when it's not going right and you're down by five goals. He showed, you know, heart, determination, fire. Um, and it doesn't have to be in the fighting world. It doesn't have to be that because we know it's different. The game is different. I'm not – it's not trying to be like a dinosaur. I'm just saying, but you can't – the Capitals did whatever they wanted. If they wanted to turn up the physical play, they could do it, Ed. The Penguins don't really have that. And, and Jay, now I never played hockey or coach hockey, but I played football and coach football. Yeah. And especially in coaching, you just you look for guys. It's something that's there. It's innate. They're either tough and physical or they're not. You, it's not right. something you're going you're gonna to build into them. No, that's true. And this is – again, this team is not built. Look, when we're, we were praising them when they were starting off and they did – a great job, had a great start on the, the, to the season. But in an eight, again, I always think that hockey's one sport in all sports. There's 17 games in football in the NFL. You got 82 in, in hockey. In that time frame, your weaknesses get exposed, no matter what. I mean, even like Jersey and Columbus right now, I'm, I'm jumping around here, but to give you an idea what I mean, Jersey and Columbus are teams that people didn't expect to be this difficult of, a, of an out when you go to play them. They're winning games. They're playing a great team game. They're fast. They're on pucks. They're hard to play against. So now you find yourself 
okay, what do we have? What are we doing? And you're towards the bottom of the division when only three get through. Um, it, it's going to be, it's, it's tough. And now, so you can't change these, some of the players that are in the sign, they are what they are. This is how they got here. But you, you also, it's the national hockey league and you have to still play with an edge. There has to be an edge because the other teams that you're playing against, the Rangers got bigger and tougher. Washington's always going to be the same way they play. Wilson dominates. He, he, he dictates a game uh, across the board. Flyers are bigger, stronger, you know, faster in some areas. So, yeah, the Penguins, is this going to be interesting, the adjustments that come up here, Ed? I mean, I, I do think a, a weekend like this, now you can write the ship and we can next time you and I talk, hey, maybe they rattle off five, six, seven wins in a row. And then we're talking a different story. But the fact of the matter is these two losses over the weekend where it was a little listless in my opinion, I didn't, I didn't see the life in it, um, which made for a bad sports weekend in Pittsburgh with the Steelers doing what they did. So to me, uh, at some point, uh, the, I know the wheels are turning. They have to be turning if you're a GM with, with uh, what you're seeing. But I also will give a pass on the idea that COVID is, is, is uh, taking a chunk out of teams and it's impacting the Penguins. Now, guys get back. They get on another day of practice. They get to do all kinds of stuff, you know, getting ready. I think they maybe have a day off, but some will be on the ice. They just got to get back and get back the timing. And uh, usually when you have a scheduled day off and you play a weekend like that, you're not off anymore today. You should be on the ice. And I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. But uh, uh, weekends like this force force to hand the GMs uh, to reevaluate. And they're always evaluating, but to really look at what you have and what you're putting on the ice. Uh, Jay, to touch on what you, you mentioned, talking about the physicality, I, I remember the, the days when the Pens, if you messed with Lemieux or even earlier with Crosby, the Pens had someone come off the bench that was going to retaliate to protect those guys. I don't see that anymore, and I believe what you say. You have to have that kind of retaliation or that enforcer for it. Otherwise, your star players are going to get hammered. Yeah, and, and yeah, that's the part which I, look. That's the part where I know I said, "Hey, the game has changed so much." So some teams aren't even employing uh, a player like that. But the teams that aren't doing that have a toughness inside their team that they all play the game hard, difficult to play against. That's what needs to happen. Like something has to be on the edge. You don't. They're, they're the Penguins aren't going to be a team. Uh, first of all, I'm I'm agreeing with what you're saying, especially when you have a superstar like a Crosby and when Malkin comes back and Latang, Gensel, Rust, all these guys, if somebody starts to abuse that situation, there should be somebody out there when there's nobody to even threaten them. There's not even a threat, a threat on the bench. Then the reaction of the players is different on the ice. Just like the other night in Ottawa, uh, Sanford was just grabbing guys and pulling them around and kind of ragdolling players and nothing was happening. That's not what Pittsburgh, the city of Pittsburgh likes. It's not what, uh, uh, team management is going to like. I, that's why I believe it's addressed, especially with, again, Ron Hextall from a tough, tough era. And he was a tough, tough goal. He was a goaltender that was tough. And everybody knew it. You had to be on edge. You had to be alert when you're playing against him or went anywhere near him. And these are kind of teams that the, the, the league has evolved for the better, but there's also still some things you have players that have to be addressed and take care of. And uh, Sidney Crosby shouldn't be your main combatant in a game when you're playing against the Capitals and you're down by five goals. Shouldn't be him. That's the last person you want to see be involved in it. But he was the one like saying, hey, we're not, you know, okay, you got us tonight, but you're not going to get us the next time type of mentality. Hey, Jay, here's a pet peeve of mine. This scheduling by the National Hockey League. I know the Pens have three three games in four days. Then there was a stretch. I don't think they played for like, what, five or six days? Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand this scheduling. Does anyone? No, no, and it's all up. And obviously, it's with um, it's with arenas and and you know the availability of all that. And and then you have this Olympic break that's three weeks long. Um, so they're going to squeeze games in, but to have a long break and then have have like you, like you said three and four, and then the way the travel goes too. I mean, it's up to Canada, down to Washington, over. You know, it's hey. But they get to travel, and you know what? Nobody complained. I mean, there's. I think the teams that complain were when Rick Tockett – I used to talk to Rick Tockett when he was coaching in Arizona. Their travel schedule was horrific just because of where they went, what they had to do. Out here in the Eastern Conference, much easier, and they charter everywhere. So the travel's pretty good, and uh, they get fed well. They get, they're well taken care of. 
So uh, with all that being said, you expect when you take care of the players that the, the effort needs to be there on the ice. And uh, I think that's okay. But I'm with you. The scheduling is just wacky, but the players are well taken care of and they, they fly, they charter everywhere. So they're, they're, they'll they be okay with that. But it is wild when you get these gaps. And I'm not a fan of, hey, the Olympic thing is great for hockey to have the best players in it, Ed. But a three-week break, I know a lot of players don't really – it's nice to have a little break if you're not involved in the Olympics. But now you're like a, going through a whole new training camp again <laughs> before you get going. And But that's the way it is. I think the, the Olympics is great for the game because you're getting a chance still to watch Crosby and – players in like across the world, the best players really in the world representing their countries. And it's a, it'll be a, a great uh, event to be watching. Jay, in our final minutes here, let's take a look at the lines with Crosby coming, coming back. I mean, I, yeah. these lines have shifted so much during the season, what Solomon had to do with injuries and COVID. So line one prior to uh, Crosby coming back with Gensel, uh, Carter and, and Ross, Let's start there, uh, how that's going to change and how that will reverberate down through the other three lines. Why don't you take it from there and give us your yeah. take on what you see with the lines, what Sullivan can do. Yeah, yeah. I think, first of all, as soon as Crosby came back, as we saw last night, he's right between Gensel and Russ. That's the line that's uh, going to drive the, sh you know, steer the ship, if you will. They're the ones that make things happen. They're all extremely gifted. They work well together. So you'll have Crosby be number one. Then you'll have Carter slide down to number two, and your depth down the middle is going to be outstanding when Malkin comes back, right? But right now you have Carter go to number two, and the way it looks right now between Zucker and Kapanen, which is a should be a great fit too, I, I believe. And then here's where it starts to get dicey, right? So do you keep Rodriguez in the middle? Like what I would do is well, I would look at is put Rodriguez in the middle between Heinen and McGinn. And then your fourth line can be Bluger between Zach Aston Reese. And now, see, this is tough. This where does Brian Boyle fit into this whole thing? What are they, what are they doing? What are they, what is their plan? Because he, he's a veteran player that people they probably great in the locker room. And you see what he's able to do on the ice. The penalty killing has been very good. Bring him back because of his size and physicality. Yeah, I mean, you'd like it to be big down the middle, but now you just just when we're talking right here, so what do you do? You've you've got O'Connor now that they just sent down to the minors. You've got Simone that's on the bench. You've got Lafferty who brings size and speed, but he's he's like the he's always the he's the one guy, the odd man out all the time. But really, when you look at it, I think as I would go, I would go Rodriguez between a McGinn and Heinen. That, that's good. It could be create. There's creativity involved in that. And you get your scoring. Then your fourth line can be Bluger, Zach Aston, Reese. And uh, now you got to pick your spot. What are you going to do? Are you going to keep maybe Boyle in the middle and put Rodriguez or rather uh, another right handed shot on the right side? I would have O'Connor in the lineup. Zach Aston, Reese doesn't have to be in the lineup each and every night. He's not producing offensively. They moved him down to the fourth line the other night. I think they're, they're, they're putting him on notice. Uh, he's, he's, Phenomenal defensively, but they're looking for something different. You can tell by the adjustment the other night there, Ed, that uh, they're not really thrilled with what's going on when they bumped them, pushed them down. So I think that last line you have you have between Bluger, Boyle, Zach Aston, Reese, Lafferty, O'Connor should be in that mix. I think O'Connor's a player that he's only going to get better in the NHL. He's proven he can be an NHL player, and I like his size, speed, tough to play against. He takes it to the net. I think throughout the year, you'll see him back in. And Lafferty's another guy for me with speed. Like, that's something that you could have used. I would have liked to have seen last night. Um, but it's, he's not there. He's not in, in the mix. But And Simone's the other player. So, you know, Ed, the top two are set. I think when Malcolm comes back and then you slide Carter down even further, believe me, the, 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 there's a lot of players that can play the game. Third or fourth line to drop yeah. Carter down here. Yeah, yeah. And – but – it's, uh, this is going to be interesting how this really plays out and how do the, the, the expanded roles for some players or the diminished role for a player, how do they handle that? Are they still effective? That's going to be really, really the, uh, the thing to look at, Ed, as we get into this and how does it shape and, and play, play itself out. Hey, Jane, the final two minutes here. Let, yeah. Give me your scouting report on – we can't do the whole league, but the, the Eastern Conference and Metro – division with with the pens and the pens are in seventh place they're chasing all all these teams how, yeah. how do you how do you see this uh, uh division 
Wow, it, this is a, it's tough. I mean, it could the Rangers are better, even though they're getting great goaltending, you know. So their record is what it is with great goaltending, but they can they can put the puck in the net. They said they're fast, they're physical. Uh, they brought over a number of additions. Carolina, extremely good. Uh, I, I, I'm telling you, Ed, it's a tough – to be one of the top three in this division, you're going to earn it. You're going to have to earn it. And the Penguins are going to have to play great hockey and have a stretch where they win five – you know, rattle off five, six wins in a row to get themselves back into that, that position. And when health and everything comes around, I think they can be there. But it's going to be difficult – and I think it's uh, – I, I do believe the division that they're in, the Metro Division, is the best in, the, best in the league. But, uh, I mean, look at Florida. Look at Tampa. And Boston always is there. Uh, Washington, we saw what they did and how they played last night. The Islanders are behind the Penguins, but they know their game. It's going to be about solid goaltending and timely goal scoring, and they play strong defensively. They know – they feel comfortable they're going to climb the ladder, but they got to be careful too. All these teams, if you get too far behind, Ed – um, it's you're not going to be able to climb out of it because just even because of that that loser point that you get in a, in, a, in an overtime, it's hard to catch teams with that extra point. If you know teams maybe if you lose and don't pick up a point, that's how you start to climb. But when they get that loser point in overtime or the shootout, it makes it difficult to catch. So the Islanders have to be leery. They're getting you're in mid November and they're in last place, they but they better. know their game. Hey, AJ, in the final minute here, how impressed yeah. are you with Edmonton? They have the number one and number two yeah. scores in summers. And Connor David, is he the best player in the league at this point? I think he has to be. Listen, there, look, there are number ones. We always talk about Crosby being because of what he does. But t- today's game and what, what McDavid does with Dreisaitl, I mean, yeah, Ed, they're outstanding. He's, he's the best. There's nobody faster in the game. There's nobody that backs people off like he does. And I mean defensively. You'll watch the defenseman. He's got to turn and go right away. Nobody like him in the game. I don't know if I've ever seen a player that fast who handles the puck while he's that fast. Uh, McKinnon's another guy in Colorado. So, yeah, listen, the, 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 the league is really loaded with a lot of great young talent, but that McDavid, McKinnon, players like that, and we're, we've had the pleasure of watching Crosby versus Ovechkin all these years, and you look at what they've done, Ed, and uh, these next players coming up, have to do it but as far as Edmonton and McDavid hey listen they 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 have to have success in the playoffs now it's it's that the heat's on up there for them to produce uh in the playoffs they do it every year in regular season they need to have a group a great playoff run this year had to be uh to kind of settle things down at Edmonton Jay as always great talking to you I can go on for another half hour with all I have that pleasure you, but uh thanks for joining us taking time out and uh Continue your great uh, analyst for the Pens hockey. Thanks, Ed. It's always a pleasure talking to you, too. You take care. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on a special edition of the Coaches Roundtable.